little folks, sir, don't hide in the shadows. And look at me, crown it with the children of the Lord. Move up a little closer, don't wait any longer. Move up a little closer to the kingdom of the Lord.
My destination will be the same place, and I thank God for it. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. We appreciate Brother and Sister Napa yes, for we do. what they have done for this church yes, and uh, the way they have worked and right. helped. And uh, like I said, we just want to tell them how much we love them and appreciate them. Right. And I yes, hope yes, that that yes. love can be felt from this church yes. because, like I said, we appreciate it. And at this time, we're going to ask Brother Napa if you would just come on, Brother, and just let the Lord take the throne and use you today. Yes, Bless Pray the Lord. Jesus. It's good to be in Marks, Mississippi with you wonderful people of the Lord today. Amen. Um, Bless you, Lord. I feel like the Lord has given me a message for this church this morning. Oh, amen, brother. Come I really on. I feel that way. Yes, sir, brother. Come on. I know we've been through a lot in the last several weeks. Oh, yes, sir. But you know what? God is always able to bring us through. Yes, he is. Amen. He's a never fail. He never leaves us yes, alone. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I'll be with you always, even. even unto the end of the world. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. Praise God. I'm thankful for that promise, aren't you? Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Sometimes you get to a place you can feel all alone, that you feel like God is not even listening to you. But I can assure you this. He always hears. He's always listening. Amen. His That's ears it, are always open to the beckoning cry of his children. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. Bless him, brother. Him, brother. Don't you love him today? Don't you appreciate him? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
not pay, paying attention quite so well. The babies, they're always watching. Hallelujah. One clapping her hand. The other one just had his eyes pasted on full of it. Then. Praise God. Amen. We're going to have a time in the Holy Ghost this Amen. morning. Amen. Yes, sir, bro. Praise the Lord. Brother Randy, won't you sing us one more song? Oh, right. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Let's When everything is gone wrong, I got back to the wall. Sick coming on strong. He really wants me to fall. He's in trouble my way. And he but sickness is part of his plan. By myself I can't win. Bless you. 
Jess, be encouraged in the Lord. God's got some wonderful things for you. Hallelujah. I can assure you. Amen. Jess told me, she said, Brother Napper, and smoked a cigarette since last weekend. Oh, yes. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. That's right. When you have a made up mind, it doesn't matter if all hell comes Amen. against That's you. That's it, brother. Come on. Amen. Amen. We are more than overcomers yes. through Christ. That's it. Amen. Love us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad that he loves you today? Yes. Amen. Amen. God's got some wonderful things for you. I want you to keep on keeping on to Jesus. That's the same way I started. It took me a week. To get rid of them. I said, you did better than I did. You just threw them down and you was done with it. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's got some wonderful things. Just keep on walking for Jesus. Amen. Acts chapter Amen. 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man. And one that feared God with all his house. Which gave much alms to the people. And prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before God. Ooh, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You can pray until you plaster your prayers all over heaven. You can guild until God looks down and he begins to take notice. There's a very given man. There's a very given woman. I'm going to bless them. Amen, bro. That's it. There's going to be a great difference made in their life because God takes notice. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. We don't know how long Cornelius had prayed. Just that he prayed always. Amen. That's it. And gave much. Amen. But one thing that we can rest assured in from the reading of this story that God heard his prayers because they came up as a memorial before God. I get a vivid picture of this in my mind that everywhere God looked in heaven, the prayers of Cornelius was bouncing off of heaven's walls. We place memorials. In the vestibule, we place memorials in certain places in our churches and in our homes to people. There will be memorials in my home and in this church to Brother Harold W. Smith because I loved him so dearly. But when I think of this story and realize the memorials that Cornelius was plastering all over heaven's walls, everywhere God looked, there was the memorial. Hallelujah. Let's pray and ask God's blessing upon this service. Blessed Jesus, we love you. We thank, thank you for, your precious for the opportunity Lord, to be in this house of God once again. Lord, we count it a great thank honor, you, Lord, a great Lord, privilege, Lord, Lord, to stand in your presence, to preach your word, to worship you, to exalt your mighty name that's blessed above all. God, we pray and ask, Lord, that you would touch these lips that they may utter the words that you would have spoken in this service this morning. Touch each and every heart, each and every mind. Let us be encouraged by the word of the Lord. We'll give you the praise and the honor and the thanks for it. In Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen. If you would, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Because God has given the victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I know and I understand that God is a prayer answering God. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. I'd like to say that again. Because I want you to get it. I know That's it, brother. and I understand Amen. That's that God it, yes, sir. is a prayer answering God. If you ever had God an answer a prayer for you, put your hands together for Jesus. God, God is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. But the fact remains that the people of the Lord sometimes get to a place in their prayer life that their prayer time becomes a thing of duty. Have you ever got there? You see, I believe that anyone that has lived for the Lord 
any amount of time can testify to the fact that they have been in a, such a place as this. Mm -hmm. I've got there, Brother Napper. I've been there. Hallelujah. Maybe you're there now. Hallelujah. Amen. They love the Lord, no doubt. You love God with all of your heart. Amen. Come on, brother. There's not anything that you wouldn't do for the Lord and the glory of God and His kingdom. But the Lord seems sometimes that while you're praying unto Him, that your prayers just don't even reach the ceiling of the room where you kneel to pray. Come on, brother. Don't it pray. seems that heaven is brassed over and they're just falling back down around you and they're not getting anywhere at all. You see, these things can begin to happen when, when work and when play and time spent with the children and time doing things around the house and trying to keep up the home and, and different things seem like they are crowding our life to such a point that we can't stay focused on the Lord like we should when we go before Him in prayer. Amen. That's Amen. It seems that you're in a place that your life just gets out of balance. You can't seem to juggle it all. Every time you try, you're just dropping things left and right. And your life's out of balance and you can't seem to balance play time, work time, time with the children, time around the house, things that you have to do, and your time before the throne. They just seem to get out of balance. You see, this is when you get to a place that it just seems to, that you're just rushing through your prayer time. And God, I'm, I'm before you today. Here I am, Lord. I'm, I'm knocking again, Lord. Come on, brother. God, I'm before your throne. It's your child once again. Oh, yeah. Come on, brother. That's it. But you yeah. just seem to rush through it. And you just can't, for some reason, get your heart engaged with the things of God. Hallelujah. Your mind is there. Come on, You're physically there. Come on, but for some reason, you just can't engage. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, well, today, with the help of the Lord, for just a little while, I'd like to preach on this thought. Prayers that reach heaven. Prayers that reach heaven. I don't think that there's anyone in here at all who would not like their, their prayers to reach heaven, the throne of God. Right. There's not anyone in here that would go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to pray today, but I just really don't care if you answer the prayer or not. I don't think there's anyone at all that way. No. We all, as children of God, we want our Heavenly Father to hear us. Yes, sir, brother. We want our Heavenly Father to know that His child has come once again before His throne. Come on, that's it, brother. Amen. But sometimes we just rush through it. Hallelujah. You see, if you stay in this state too long, you can finally become cold and hot. And before you realize it, because of the crowding of things around you, Time that's so essential to be spent with family, with, with work, and with play, and things around the home, play with the children. Before you know it, you can grow cold in heart, and slowly but surely, many people, without even realizing it, they begin to fall into a backslidden state. I'm not saying anyone here this morning is. I believe just the other. I believe that everybody here is going toward God. For more reasons than one, I believe that everybody's reaching to the Lord. Amen, that's it. But I do believe this. We can pray, mm -hmm. and then we can pray. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Someone related a story to me just the other day, and it really hit home with me. And when they did, God spoke this message to my heart. Prayers that reach heaven. And in this story, they begin to relate unto me a man that had once lived for God. And some way along the line of his walk with the Lord, he began to slip and fall. And finally, he was backslid. I don't know how long he 
he had been in this state of a backslidden situation. I don't know how long it had been since he had walked into the house of the Lord. I don't know how long it had been since he had actually felt the presence of God. I don't know how long it had been since he had lifted his hand and began to worship God and speak with other tongues and the Spirit of God gives the utterance and that prayer language would go before God that only God and God alone could understand. I don't know how long had he been in this state, but one thing I do know, his son had fallen sick. Yeah. And he got to a place that, that the child was going to die. So he made up his mind that there's something got to be done. And he remembered someone gave him a prayer cloth many years before. He went and he began to search until he finally found this prayer cloth. And he brought it and he laid it upon the body of this child. And he said, God, if there's any power left in this, God, raise my child up. I want you to understand something this morning. It's not just a prayer. This prayer, some words that are said. This man was in a place of desperation. He needed a touch from all. I know about this. My wife really knows about it. Praise God. Like an earthquake to wake me up sometimes. But I can assure you one thing. If that child begins to cry. Hallelujah. I don't care what time of night it is. That child begins to cry out. Oh, you'll roll out of that bed instantly and run to the aid of that child. Wonder what in the world is going on. My heavenly father, hallelujah. He's pretty much the same way. When his child begins to cry out, my God runs to the aid. What in the world is wrong? What's going on? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. The Bible even bears it out. Peter was locked up in a prison house. The church assembled together and they begin to fast and pray. That's it, brother. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Come on. It wasn't long that by miraculous events, Peter was released from the jail. Amen. That's it, brother. Yes, sir. They were still earnestly praying before the throne of God. And Peter knocks at the door. Uh -huh. Come on, brother. <laughs> the young girl opens the door and Thought she had seen a ghost. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. Ran back there. There's a, there's a ghost. I, I, I made it look kind of like Peter. I don't know. Peter keeps knocking. Hallelujah. You need to get to a place of prayer Come that on. you earnestly pray before Almighty God. Oh, that your prayer comes knocking back on your door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, it's going to come walking right back down the road of your life. It won't only go up before God. Prayer is going to come back down. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Isaiah came into the courts of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, put your house in order, for you should surely die. Amen. That's it. Come on, brother. Well, I can understand this. Maybe if you've lived a long life for the Lord and you've made up your mind, it would be better just to go be with Him than to remain here. That's it. Come on. And people get to that place in life, no doubt. Come on. Amen, brother. 
But Hezekiah, he hadn't arrived there yet. That's it. Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. Right. He began to cry out unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it, brother. I mean, I, I don't think for a moment if a man of God came up to you and said, you're going to die. Come on. I don't think for a moment if you fell before the Lord, you say, Lord, what you think about this? He said, I'm going to die. And uh, well, I'm just not ready yet. And amen. Come on, I don't think you would do that at all. No, sir, me, brother. And I don't think Hezekiah did either. I believe when he turned his face toward the wall, there was something deep down with inside of him bosom that began to cry out unto the Almighty God. It seems to me that there is a hand of the soul that reaches far beyond any word or your lips can even utter. Amen. It reaches unto the very throne of God and takes the hold of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's where Hezekiah was. Isaiah was walking out across the court. And the Lord spoke to him and told him to turn around and go back and tell Hezekiah. The Lord has added 15 years unto his life. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. Bless Hallelujah. Thank God. There was a young woman in the Bible. Sister had had children. Neil, I think her name was. But she was bad. And she made up her mind that she was going to go before the Lord. She did. She fell before the presence of the Lord and began to cry out unto God with all of her heart. You remember the scripture in the Bible with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is the place she was. Hannah was crying out to the glory of God. Oh, come on. How did God, you? give me children. The priest looked upon her. He noted her lips. They were moving, but words weren't even coming out. I see it. Come on, brother. There was groanings coming from deep down within that wasn't even being uttered from her lips. That's it. Come on, brother. But I can assure you one thing. But there was a voice down deep within her that was reaching way beyond anything that that priest could take note of. He looked at her and said, you're drunk. Oh no, nothing of such has ever touched my lips. God blessed her, opened her womb. She bore three, three sons and two daughters. And she dedicated Samuel unto the Lord, became the prophet of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't tell me that God won't hear your prayer. He'll not only hear your prayer and answer your prayer. God can answer in an abundant way. Hallelujah. But we've got to learn to cry out unto the Almighty God. We've got to get to a place where the ordinary doesn't satisfy anymore. We've got to get to a place where we're sick and tired of the mundane. We've got to get to a place where we're sick and tired of looking around and only seeing a few in our church. We've got to get to a place where we want revival more than we want anything. We've got to get to a place where we cry out with groaning which cannot be uttered. Oh, God, give us children lest we die. Oh, God, we've got to have revival. We've got to see a move of God. We've got to have the power in the presence of God in our midst. I believe God wants to send Mark's revival. Yes. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. yes, yes hallelujah. In two weeks from now, the Lord will, and I'll tell you why. Hallelujah. So you're going to have to sit on and pray about it until the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I believe with all of my heart, there's a revival waiting to happen. Right amen, amen. Where's it going to come from? We're a small town. Just hang on. Hallelujah. On, God can bless in an abundant way. He took just a, a loaf and a few fishes and fed 5,000. Don't tell me that God can't bless this church and it'll be overrunning. Hallelujah. You see, I believe that Brother Harold Smith had planted seeds throughout this community for years. Amen. Uh, sister Pat, Sister uh, uh, Linda, uh, Brother Randy. Mom, yesterday I went and talked to her. Amen. And, and then, you see, I believe that God is reaching out and taking a hold of people just everywhere. God's going to bring a backslider in. God's going to raise up a people here. Hallelujah. There's going to be an abundant flow of people from walking through the third. Why? It's because of the seeds that's been planted. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. Yes. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody put your hands together. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Man of God, running from God. Didn't care for a people that God was calling him to preach to. You ever heard of such a thing, Brother Joe? A man of God. Not concerned and not care for the people that God has called him to preach to. How can a person get to a state where they don't care about a soul? Such was the state of a prophet named Jonah. Yes, sir. Come on. Hallelujah. He ran from God. Yes, sir. Found himself in the bottom of a ship. Great storm had arisen. They thought all would be lost. And they found out it was all because of a man running from God. Oh, yes. They threw him overboard. The storm ceased, but a great fish swallowed Jonah. Come on, that's it. Yes, sir, brother. Jonah's running from God. Jonah don't care about the people that God called him to minister to. But Jonah got sick and tired of where he was in the belly of that great fish. Seaweed wrapped about his neck, no doubt choking on and off in the, in the water, in the sludge, and the... Ooh, man, that's not a good place to be. Oh, no, I, I fish a lot in my life. I've cut a lot of them little buzzards open. And I know it's inside. I ain't got a place I'd want to be. No, oh, sir. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Oh, amen. God. But I believe in the belly of that fish. Jonah began to weigh the odds. Amen. What's the odds of me making it out of the belly of this fish? Come on, that's it. Are not too good. That's it. But I know if I obey God, all will be well. That's it, amen. So Jonah made up his mind. I'm sick and tired of being here. It's not worth all of this. I've got to obey God. And Jonah cried out from the belly of the fish. Oh, what made him cry out? I tell you what made him cry out. If a great fish swallowed me, I begin to cry before he ever got me past his lips. Oh God, deliver me! Oh God, help me! Hallelujah! And the fish bounced him out on dry ground. And then of the word Jonah turned a hole. There's been times in my life that I'd get to a place and I'd pray. But it seemed like it just wouldn't touch an hand. I would pray. I can look back down over my life and I can see many times peppered throughout that I was praying. But Brother Jody, when I got to a place. Come on, brother. That I was sick and tired of the situation. All of a sudden, I began to cry out to God, and God would answer. Hallelujah. He would show up. You see, you've got to get to a place where you're sick and tired of the same old, same old in your life. You're sick and tired of being down. You're sick and tired of being depressed. And then, and then only, will you break through that shell that's been made around your life by the enemy and touch the very hem of the garment of the master. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Joey. Yesterday afternoon, I, I noticed you was, you was hurting quite a bit. Jesus. I was feeling very uncomfortable. Uh -huh. He came back and we prayed for Brother Jody. <laughs> but I seen something in his face. Oh. Brother Jody, he didn't seem like he was just praying a little lady down to sleep prayer. Oh. He had a desperate need right then and there. Yes, and yes. God began to touch Brother Jody. He no more shut the Have you ever got to that place in your life? It seemed like you just couldn't break out of the ordinary into that supernatural realm of the presence of God. Has anybody ever been there? Come on, wave your hand at Jesus if you did. Come on. 
Now the rest of you need to wave your hands. What the hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody get set because we're going to be tried as by fire. The enemy wants you to think God is a billion miles away. And he never listens to you. Amen. And sometimes God just backs away and, and, and looks down and says, well, if you just read my word, it says I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll stick with you closer than a brother. I'm there always, even unto the end of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, my God never leaves us. He never forsakes us. The devil can be on one side fighting you tooth and nail. But my God is standing right there next to you. And all you got to do is get sick of the devil whispering in your ear and cry out to God. He's standing right beside you. He'll hear your prayer. And my God will answer my prayer. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. I'm just about done. Hallelujah. I'm trying to stick with brother, what Brother Harold Smith taught me. I'm going to do my best. Here they are. They've walked with Jesus. They've talked with Jesus. And they knew all was well with Jesus. But he told them to get in the boat. Go over to the other side. That's what he told us. Yes, sir. Amen. Get into this good old gospel ship and go over to the other side. That's it. Amen. Did he ever tell us that we're going to get lost along the way? Come on. That's Did he ever tell us the boat's going to sink during the journey of life? Did he ever tell us that? He never told us that. He said, get in the boat and go to the other side. They're in the boat. Storm arises. Here's Jesus walking on the water. Walking on the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey, look out. <laughs> and immediately they think trouble is on the way. <laughs> wow, it's a ghost. Oh boy, what we gotta do now? We're in the middle of the sea and we can't even get out of this situation. It's a ghost. Oh, it's a ghost. Jesus cried out. Oh, come on. It is I. It is I. Think not. Be I've been in situations where I felt the supernatural power of God to such a point that I thought, oh God, what is this? And then God would begin to unveil things to me. And I realized this is God. Hallelujah. Lord, if it's you, He's still not. Come on, that's his mind, you know. He still hadn't came to the conclusion that it's really Jesus. They're still shaking in their boots. That's it, amen. Wondering if the ship's going to tip. The ghost is going to scare them. They're going to be swimming in the storm. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. That's it. Woo, hallelujah. He said, come. And yeah. Peter stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the way. He was yeah. headed toward Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You see, some of us, we're going to have to walk on the trouble. We're going to have to walk by faith. We're going to have to keep our eyes on Jesus because if we ever get them off of the Lord and on the storm that's around us, we're surely to pay them. That's it. Right. Amen, right. brother. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But Peter, when he looked around, he seen the storm yes, sir. was boisterous. Yes, the waves are crashing. Yes, sir. He looked at all the trouble around him. Yes, sir. Oh, his heart began to faint. Yes, sir, brother. Why? Because he took his eyes off Jesus. And begin to look at all the trouble around him. That's, it, That's what the waves and the winds and the water represented trouble in his life. That's That's it. And when he began to look at the trouble, he began to sink. That's it. Come on, brother. And I can assure you of one thing. Every time we get our eyes off of Jesus, we begin to sink. Chance every time you feel that urge to pick up that old cigarette, I want you to do one. Hey, I want you to cry out to the glory of God. Cry out to heaven and say, Jesus, I've got need of you, Lord. I can't do it on my own. I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. 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 
things I don't understand. Hallelujah. Yeah. A whole lot of things. But the one thing I didn't understand, the Lord spoke to me. He said, just as my servant Peter stepped out on troubled waters, so shall you. He said, look not to the left nor to the right, but keep a steadfast look upon me and I'll lead you and guide you. Right. Not that I ever thought I was going to walk on water by no means. I knew. I got the thing about it. I said, Lord, you telling me my life is going to be filled with troubles on every side and I'm going to have to walk by faith. But here I am in Mark's Mississippi. Amen. I've walked right in behind a man that lived faith, died faith. I'm talking about the man. Hallelujah. Hell. Look at Smith. Oh, and he done almost shut down about the young man about hell. The greatest man of faith I've ever met in my entire life. I'm not talking about just a man of the word. I'm talking about a man that lived and walked and breathed and ate and slept and Brother, yeah. Yeah. If he did anything for me, he taught me how to have faith. Right. Yeah. Come on, brother. Amen. Oh, I'll show you. There's been times in my life that I looked around and, and I began to sink in the midst of all the troubles. And it was those times that the Lord, sooner or later, he would come booming in. Yes, amen. But it never was until I got to a place of desperation, Brother Randy. I got sick of the trouble, sick of the situation. And I made up my mind, I'm not going another day unless God does something about it. And I cry out in desperation that God would answer my prayer. Here is Peter sinking in the sea. What did he do? He don't have to go before God for three weeks, six weeks, 85 services. You don't have to do it at all. When you get sick and tired of the same old same old, all you got to do is reach your hand toward heaven and cry out to God, Lord, save me. God will hear and God will answer. Jesus called him by the hand and took him back to the shelf. That's it. Hallelujah. He didn't take him and shake him around like a rag doll and throw him out to the sea to drown. No, he no. took him back to the ship. That's it. That's it. Amen. The devil liked to have you think in these times, these situations. See, if you hadn't messed up, you wouldn't be sinking in the first place. See, if you hadn't messed up, all this trouble wouldn't be about you. Come on. He's a liar and the father of all lies, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. These yes, times of trial and temptation. But the master is teaching us to trust in him, to depend on him. If we're going to have revival. Amen. We're going to have to depend on him. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not going to do it alone. Oh, sure. Amen. He said if we'll put forth one foot, he'll put forth two because there's no limit what my God can do. That's it. Amen. That's for sure. That's certain. Amen. That's it, brother. But we're going to have to depend on him every step of the way. Have you ever walked up to an individual? Come on, somebody on the child side or something. And God begins to speak to you concerning this individual. And you begin to you begin to relate to them things you're going through. Tears begin to roll down his face. I'm calling. I'm talking about a supernatural God. Hallelujah. 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 We've got to have the supernatural power of God. In the place of desperation is where we're going to find it. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Oh, amen and amen, brother. Would you all stand, please? Hallelujah. You see, many times throughout our walk with the Lord, we think there's no hope in sight. I've even heard people testify. And I was going to move to the other side of the church. <laughs> and testify. Well, this is my portion in life that I go through these things. We are all going to go through things. But a continual walking through the dry places. Amen. Continual walking through those places that you just can't seem to touch heaven. That's not the will of God. That's not the will of God for anybody.
Because the Lord wants us to have victory in our lives. Amen. How can you be a soul winner if you can't get your lip off your shoelaces? You're always walking around, bless my soul. This is my portion in life. Get me in other places to sit on the other side of the church. You got to break out of this. It's not the will of God for anybody. Come on, bro. Hallelujah. That's it. It's the will of God for us to have victory and joy. Unspeakable, full of glory. What is the kingdom of God? It's not meat and drink. It's not things that you can accumulate in this world, but it's righteousness and joy and peace and the Holy Ghost. That's it. Amen, brother. Oh, amen. That's it. Hallelujah. I like the righteous part that sets us apart from this world. I like the joy because it keeps us happy. Amen. Remember the scripture, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But there's nothing, I don't think, that can compare to the peace that he gives. My peace give unto you. Now does the world give my peace. Come on, God gives us his peace in the midst of trials and troubles and situations. We can still have that peace. Rest in the shore. God's going to bring us through it. I understand. I know there's, there's, there's times and there's situations. You go through sicknesses. You go through situations that seems like you walk through valleys for a long, long time. There's been times in my life that I've walked through valleys for seemingly a long time. People around me wouldn't know it. But when I'd fall down on my knees before the Lord and cry out to God, I'm like, God, I need to have deliverance from the situation. One time in particular, it was like heaven was clouded over. God just reached down and bumped the cloud and it dissipated right before my eyes. Come on, my spiritual eye I can see it. And it just dissipated. And the heavens opened up. And the presence of God came down. And I walked in joy and victory. Hallelujah. It's not God's will that we walk in a continual valley. But when we do, you got to realize in the valley, he restores our soul. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'd like for everyone, if you would, to come around the front of the church for just a moment. I know that we've, we've all been going through it for days, weeks, But the peace speaker's been with us every step of the way. Hallelujah. I can't turn and look anywhere without the presence of God. I know that He's right there with me. Everywhere in Marks, I'm reminded of Brother Harold Smith, my poppy. That's what we call him. Not out of disrespect, only out of respect because he asked us to call him that. Praise God. But there's places that I walk in and I just tear up. Walked in the trailer yesterday afternoon and I just get the altar bench that I got from Michael. Something I wanted so very much something that Brother Smith prayed over many, many times. By the help of the Lord, I want to continue the prayers over that altar. But when I walk back in the bedroom where I last seen him among the living, tears begin to well up in my eyes. I said, oh, talk to you. Oh, how I miss him. But yet, on the other hand, there was this sweet, sweet peace. All the prayers that was prayed around this place, not only for you, but for people all around this world. Amen. That's it, brother. There's such a beautiful peace that comes from the presence of the Lord. You feel it this morning? Sister Crystal, you feel that peace? Jeff, you feel it. Girl, you know how much God loves you. I can't get you off of my mind because God's got some wonderful things for you. You know why? Because I'm praying for you. 
trust in God. God's going to do something wonderful for you. You know what? You don't have need of anybody around you. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, they're going to encourage you. You won't receive encouragement from the world. The people that don't live for God. Not at all. For every friend you lose in the world, there's many more you gain in Jesus. I only knew people just run around my little area. But I know people all over the world, missionaries, people all over the United States that I've met, preachers, pastors, people of God, everywhere. Hallelujah. God will give you so many more. People that's genuine, people that love you, people that care. God's going to do wonderful things for you, Sister Crystal. You're an encouragement to me. Before this service is closed out, I'd like to hear you sing one time, if you would, for the glory of God. I want, there's strength in numbers. I want everybody together, close together. I want you to join hands, if you would, please, all the way across this building. Hallelujah. We want revival. Brother Smith wanted revival. He prayed for it. He trusted God for it. Believed God for it. He lived it. But one thing I can assure you, God is getting ready to send revival. And I want you to believe with me, with all your heart right now, that God is going to send revival. Come on, I want you to think for just a moment. Now all the prayer, all throughout the hours of the night, the brother spent praying for people in this community, people that he knew, people around the world. He prayed for revival, not only for here, but in everybody's life and ministry, wherever it may have taken them. I want you to reach out. Come on. While your hands are joined, come on, stretch them toward heaven if you would. Come on, I want you to cry out to God with all of your heart. Jesus, we have need of you, Lord. We're ready for the revival.